time to do our second date with my girl here. Unfortunately, I do feel like it's slightly cheating since um, I kind of had a kiss with the other dude. But at the same time, you know, she and I haven't kissed, so it's okay, it's cool. We don't know how it's gonna play. I feel dirty. <laughs> this is my god, I'm playing best friend forever. Okay, let's do this. Marvel's a fireball, but she's a lot of fun. Let's see if she's available for another date. She is a lot of fun. Maribel, let's catch up. It's not like you're at my house getting drunk with all of us. Yes, yes, I'll make time. Let's do a park date. Oh my god, bring Biscuit and I'll bring Gravy and they can play in the grass. It'll be super cute. Oh, I, I missed it. Sounds like a plan. I'll see you there tomorrow lunchtime. Yes, I'll bring protein bars for us to share. Oh, she's so sweet. I love protein bars. There's something questionable about using a chocolate emoji to represent a protein bar. Ooh, duck park. The park is surprisingly busy for this week of the day, but there are a few kids running around. But they're easily abnormal by the sheer volume of dogs. Why is there no goose sign? Even in such a dog-friendly city, I guess a few can resist the allure of an off-leash park. Even Brisket is struggling to contain his excitement. I know, there's so many dogs, so many smells. I'll let you off your leash once Maribel gets here, just in case. Hey, don't give me that sad dog act. She shouldn't be much longer, I assume. You know what they say about assuming? It makes an ass of you and of me. A good ten minutes pass and there's still no sign of Maribel. Brisket faces around on his leaf. Ten minutes is not a lot of time. I've waited an hour for people before. I was mad, but I still waited. Okay, now it's getting worrying. I know she said she was busy, but it doesn't seem like Maribel to just not turn up. What if something happened to her? Yeah, I'm worried too, Brisket. Let's give her a call. I whip out my phone, struggle for a moment to remember which folder I banished the phone call app, then call up Maribel. This is so relatable. <laughs> Maribel Summer speaking. Oh, that was fast. Um, this is Maganda. Oh my god. What time is- oh god, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I got completely held up at the construction site. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it. Oh, um, that's okay. Tell you what, why don't you walk over here, and then as soon as I'm done, we can get coffee? That sounds nice. I'll see you soon. Uh, I'm no. so sorry. I stepped in a- Maribel hangs up, but not before I hear her shouting something, presumably to a builder. Oh. I look down at Brisket, sniffing around at the ground aimlessly. Sorry, buddy. No off-leash time for you today. Bit of a missed opportunity. But I'm sure you can have lots of fun with gravy to make up for it. Brisket and gravy. I arrive at the construction site after a short walk. Maribel is standing out in the open in a heated conversation with the foreman. As soon as I step onto the site, the foreman turns towards us and points. Maribel's eyes follow and she immediately lights up before skipping over. <laughs> Miranda, thank you so much for coming by. I promise it won't be longer. No. Look at that dog! Unfortunately, you can't wait here though. We don't have many more hard hats or high vis vests, so you'll have to wait off site. Hopefully, I can rack this up. Tickety boo. Is everything okay? Did you really just say tickety boo? <gasps> yes, I can say old people things sometimes. But admittedly, I'm a bit overwhelmed. I need to collect some documents, but if things carry on here much longer, I'm not gonna have time. Unless you wouldn't mind hanging out or helping out? It would. Uh, what do you want me to do exactly? Oh, do you will? Wonderful. All I need you to do is stop by Sasha's apartment in the Arts District. Your neighbors, right? You should have some documents. Just tell them you're collecting them for me. And then I'll need you to photocopy them at the library. I need like 20 copies. I'll do it myself, but a colleague broke the machine at the town hall just this morning. Um, yeah, sure, I guess I could do that for you. Great, <laughs> thank you so much. I'll meet you at the town hall afterwards, okay? My voice cracked. <laughs> Alright, see you soon. Why is her the phone? <laughs> I think my game glitched because she's still there. <laughs> uh, res resigning myself to continued consciousness, I wrap my knuckles and music musically upon Sacha's front door, and within seconds, Sacha's standing before me. His apartment is so cute. Oh, oh, hey, Megana, what's up? Uh, Sacha, I uh, um, meant to get something from you. Um, okay. Nope, not poop. 
Could you be more so specific? I have lots of things to give. Documents for Maribel. I actually don't know what they're for. Oh, sure. It's a petition. Marble had a lot of problems trying to get some affordable house, high-rise housing initiatives going lately. There's a group advocating to keep Rainbow Bay weird. It's a nice thought, but there's a difference between keeping the spirit of the city and actively refusing to address growing housing issues, you know? Anyway, I help Maribel out by getting people to sign a counter-petition supporting the construction of high-rises. Hmm. I never knew people were so opposed to apartment buildings. Not in my backyard, I guess. For some people, Views are more important than real people. Anyway, it's good to see you're helping Maribel out. She's always putting a lot more in on herself than she lets on. Is she always this busy? Well, we were actually meant to hang out today and she kind of bailed. Oof, and then you got roped in, huh? <laughs> Maribel may seem like she's going at 100 miles per hour, but that doesn't mean she isn't a very ser serious professional. I wouldn't hold it against her. She'd never mean to stand you up. Anyway, here's the petition. Oh. oh, actually, I forgot to get one last signature. It could make a real difference on the success of the campaign, so if you don't mind... Making one more stop? <laughs> yeah, just stop by Fox's Tavern and Bar. It's not far from here. Fox promised she'd sign it, but I haven't had the chance to stop by. I thought he was going to ask me to sign it. Oh, sure, I'll see what I can do. Uh, I'm really worried about this glitch. I hope it doesn't stick around. <laughs> Uh, no, visit Fox. We're gonna do this right. As per usual, the shop is cast in eternal gloom. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, Jesus, don't sneak up on people. Idiot! Be more alert. Why is she so angry and the music is so pumping? Uh, anyway, I came to ask a favor. No. Nope. nope. I didn't even say what it was yet. <laughs> this is business. You'll have to pay. I'm not paying for your signature, Fox. Oh. My signature? I don't do autographs. But I could make an exception. For a price. Price. Your voice. <laughs> no. Uh, Fine. What's the signature for? Oh, she was supposed to be like the Little Mermaid in the. Okay. It's for Maribel's petition. Something about building high rises. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm familiar. You should have led with that. <laughs> so, why are you collecting signatures for my dear friend Maribel? Mm, just being nice. Oh, you know, just helping out a friend. Uh huh. Just out of the blue, no context. You're just suddenly helping her. Well, I mean, there's context. You like her. You don't know that. <laughs> oh my god, I know and everything. I mean, mean, mean. Here's your signature. Have a good day. Fox steps backward further into the shadows of the cursed drop, feeling a cold sweat trickle down my neck. I too walk backwards, though towards the door. I have places to be, documents, you know, to photocopy. Is she still gonna be there? Yep, she's still there. <laughs> oh god, it's stuck. The library is a considerable walk from the Arts District. Even Brisket seems a little exhausted as we drag our feet through the door. Huh. Maganda? Help me. But are you alright? Too far. Huh. Someone went too far? What'd they do to you? Walking for an hour! <laughs> there are water fountains outside. Also, I need photocopies. Oh, sure. We have a photocopier. What do you need? I limply hold the petition out towards Felix, sweat from my head making it a section of it slightly see through. Why am I so sweaty? It was just an hour. Okay, this lightly seasoned document. How many copies? Uh, she said 20, right? Yeah, she said 20. I think it was like 20 copies. Sure, I can do 20. Do you want a copy spare just in case? Oh, that's probably a really good idea. All right, let's call it 22 copies. Perfect, thanks Felix. What are these for anyways? Maribel, it's a petition for some high rises. Oh. Oh wait, I think Satya got me to sign this, actually. I hope it works out for her. How'd you get roped into helping? Oh, we were supposed to be hanging out, and she bailed. It happens. We're supposed to work out together every second evening, but she often has to cancel last minute. Perils of her job, I guess. Hard to say it's her fault. Is it really fair for her to have to lose so much of her personal time for her work, though? <laughs> well, I mean, probably not, but it's not helpful if we blame her for that. The problem's institutional, but I don't know how to change it. Neither. Anyway, let me get these copies for you and then you can be off. Felix ducks away and photocopies the petitions in record time. Now all that's left is to meet Maribel back at the town hall. And she's still on my screen. <laughs> I navigate my way through the town hall, searching for Maribel's office. Eventually, I find what I'm looking for. A modest office, littered with model buildings and files. Oh, there's two of her. I poke my head in the doorway, but immediately realize Maribel's company. 
and things don't seem exactly friendly. Are you kidding me, Miss Summers? Rainbow Bay doesn't just exist to be your cash grab plot of land. You can't just sweep in and expect us to bow down to your obelisk-like apartments. Not only obelisk-like, but built by obelisks. You really want to welcome a giant corporation like that into Rainbow Bay? Well, Karen, they're actually making a difference. But at what cost? Before you start trying to change a city that you don't belong to, maybe you should learn how things work around here. No. Just because I'm not from here. Exactly. You're not from here. People like you don't get to make decisions that affect thousands of people who have been born and raised in Rainbow Bay. <sighs> but the point is to make things better for the future. What good is the future if you ruin the present? Honestly, Miss Summers. Your first development may have been approved, but don't expect to start seeing more high-rises outside of the South Shore. The people won't just sit idly by. Mm. Maribel stares up at Karen with tired eyes. The prim woman stands at her back, smiles disingenuously, then marches towards the door. She stops looking up and down. And stop bringing Riff Raff in. <laughs> ah, no. No. As soon as her back is turned to me, I mime her snooty expression and flip the bird her way. You have no idea how much I wish I could get away with that. Are you alright, Maribel? Seems like she was getting kind of personal. Ugh. Yeah, that's just what I have to put up with here. Honestly, she's the least of my problems. I can deal with traditionalists any day. Well, if it helps to brighten the mood, I got those petitions. I held up the small stack of petitions to Maribel. No. Is this 20 copies? <laughs> uh, no worries. They'll just have to share during the presentation. Now, if only I could pass a petition for life to stop taking a giant poop on my face. <laughs> Figuratively speaking. Are you sure you're alright? Not really. I didn't want to have to rely on you and get those petitions copied. Between work and Karen and Gravy's health, things aren't great right now. Is Gravy sick? No. Sick maybe isn't the right word for it, but she has patellar luxation. It's essentially a tendency for her mean cat to pop out of place. It's pretty common with smaller dogs like a Pomeranian. Hmm. She said she had it for- wait, she's had it for a while now, and she can pop it back into place by herself, but it's getting to be a problem. Jade says because of its severity, we have to get it treated before it develops into a gen degenerative arthritis. I'm just really worried about gravy, and I'm not sure I can afford the surgery. Uh, oh, jeez. No. I did not mean to unload all this onto you, I'm so sorry. We still haven't even had our date. No, that, that's okay. It sounds like you don't really have the time to be dating on top of everything else. You might be right. But I like you. Once these development plans are approved, and I've been able to save enough for gravy surgery, then I'll be avail available for a proper date. I promise. Oh, um. I've got to make it up to you. You've been nothing but wonderful. I'm just trying to be helpful. <laughs> I probably have to get to work, really, but could I have a hug? I think I can manage a good hug. <laughs> Sometimes that's all a gal needs. Maribel steps around her desk and into my open arms. She buries her face in the crook of my neck and squeezes me tightly. Oh, Maribel, <clears throat> can't <clears throat> breathe. <gasps> uh, sorry. Oh, Just needed oh. to get a good squeeze in here. I get that. Let me know if you need another hug. I'm always happy to swing by. I can even bring hot chocolate. Ooh, or coffee? And a protein bar? Sure, but uh, you'll have to tell me what to buy. <laughs> Thanks, Muganda. I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm gonna pet you too. <laughs> that was um <clears throat> extremely emotional. Oh. So yeah, um I feel kinda bad that like I've chose to date someone else now. Because she really I mean she really kind of needs someone in her life. What am I talking about? It's just a game. It's just a game. <laughs> I get too into these kind of games, though. You know? How are you sleeping? How are you sleeping? <sighs> so. I'm still gonna try and date the Anders. Because I want to know more about him. He's really... I don't know why he's just so, you know, spicy. Not in a bad way. Not like someone's angry. Spicy as in like... Ooh, kind of spicy. I don't know. <laughs> I need to up your energy. I 
creepy. Let's see. Cream, oh, cream is here. Cream is here. You know this here? Okay. Now you're awake. Yeah. Um. But I wish I, I would go down her route solely for the purpose of making her life better if I could help her. You know how it goes. You know. Oof. I'm just a softie. Inbox! Noise complaint. You're receiving this email as an owner of a point attendant of a unit in the Rainbow Bay Apartments Complex. Over the past few weeks, we have received a number of noise complaints from some building occupants. Please remember that we have a 10 p.m. noise curfew. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, nothing about me, so I don't think it was me. Obelisk holds the key to your heart. Mm, I have a feeling Obelisk isn't a good person or a good company. Woo for dating tip to win their heart. Uh, yeah, no, I'm doing a good job winning people's hearts. It's just, I don't want to win all the hearts. <laughs> Ooh. What's my, my dog? <laughs> Let's just do social. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yes. Yes, please. Oh, I misclicked. Go see Anders. A few drops of rain flecked the apart flecked the pavement at my feet, and I stare regretfully at the closed shop door. Traditionally, you have to open them first. But hello to you also, Brisket. I wanted to pick up some new plant pots, but I forgot they were closing early today. Do you think I could just break in and leave the money on the counter? You do remember that I'm here, right? Of course. I actually don't know what he said, I just guessed. I'll need to see more evidence. Perhaps you can come up with a less dramatic solution to this pot problem? Mm. Mm. My ferns can be returned to nature. Perhaps it's time to let my precious ferns grow up and be returned to the wild. <laughs> At their age, they should have already had jobs and responsibilities of their own. Oof, actually, I'm feeling a bit targeted now. Well, we all feel like plants sometimes. <laughs> Hungry at the limbs of greater forces. <laughs> Desperate to put down roots. I can't tell if that was a joke about the bedroom or some very deep fizzle off. This bit commentary. <laughs> can't it be both? We've boned. They're making jokes because we've boned. I suppose so, yes. That was very flirty, I think. Either way, I'm giving far too much thought to joint owning an affordable plant family. Oops. And another date. <laughs> this is my second date. Hopefully this will go... You know, the first date is always fun. With him, it was very naughty. <laughs> and second date, uh, some emotional trauma maybe. So let's see that emotional trauma. Give it to me! Spending time with Anders is uh, challenging. And yet somehow I want more. Maybe it's my turn to test Anders' food knowledge. Anders, you showed me your food world. Now it's my turn. You want to cook me instant noodles? How dare you? That's harsh, but fair. The burger festival is on. Let's pick a restaurant and go, go, go. Hmm, interesting. I get to pick the restaurant, though. Well, wait, no, that's, that's not the point of this. How about I pick the restaurant and you pick what you get for dessert? You can send me the address. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, what's my on? Anders sent me an address to meet him at. Of, oh, of, talk. Of course, I didn't realize until I'd arrived that I was showing up at his office. Oh, I forgot he was a lawyer. <laughs> After navigating an all-marble lobby downstairs, I eventually found his personal office on the 14th floor. Holy crap, he has so much money. When I step inside, Anders looks up from his desk with a flirtatious smile upon his face. You naughty boy. I'd recognize those hesitant footsteps anywhere. <laughs> and your hesitant hey dog. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Hey, um, Anders, are we eating in your office today? Well, we could change our plans if that's what you prefer. To be clear, I do mean food. Of course, so do I. Oh, I get it. Naughty. But no, I made a booking for t later. I just thought it would be nice if we went to travel together. 
Although, I did make those plans before something important came up. Wait, are you telling me we have to cancel? You couldn't have said that before I tracked out here? I'm not quite so drastic. We just need to make a stop at the hospital on the way there. The hospital? Is someone hurt? Well, technically, the mother would be yes. A client's, chi a client's child has just been born. It's a sur surrogacy case. Oh, babies? <laughs> not a fan of children? As long as no one asks me to hold one, I might drop it. No holding the baby. Got it. Andrew stands up from his desk and stretches, his back clicking loudly. Hemingway bolts up right from his bed by the desk. Oof, if I remember those kinds of clicks from my office days. It's worth it for an office like this. Do you like it? It's huge. It's so big. <laughs> well, yes, I get that a lot. Shall we? Was he talking about his office? <laughs> the hospital is only a short walk away. On the way over, Anders walks with his large hand on the small of my back. His touch is as warm as ever. It's only as we enter the hospital itself that he pulls away quite suddenly. In fact, he's standing straight and moving his head around erratically. Are you looking for something? Ah, oh, just wondering where my client is. Probably the maternity ward? Yes, yes, of course. Let's just, uh, make haste. Are you okay? Of course, when I'm with you. But really, we should go before- mm. Oh, that's right, she's a nurse. Oh, where'd my mouse go? Ah, there it is. Well, if it isn't Anders Hamilton, the biggest flake of Rainbow Bay. Never mind. And hi, Maganda. I hope you're having a good time among the sick and elderly. Uh, Robin, how are you? Oh, you're actually interested now? I'm doing just fine. It's wonderful to hear. Perhaps you could point me towards the maternity ward? <laughs> <laughs> now there's some irony. Follow me. What? What is with these two? It's dark. Is it loading or did I get a glitch? Well, because I didn't save. Oh, I have to click. Robin leads the way through the large hospital. The whole way there we walk in silence. Andrew's brow is ceased, creased, and he looks only forward, seemingly lost in thought. Eventually we arrive in a ward. What is with all of these race cars outside my window? <laughs> We arrive in a ward looking almost suspiciously similar to the last. Well, here you go. Home of crying and epidurals. Let me know if I can help you with anything else, Maganda. Anders. Robin Power walks away. Power walks away, heading back the way we came. That was weird. Yes, I apologize. Perhaps you could find Carrie Wells' bed? I stand back, not wanting to involve myself in another's family business. Two men stand either side of the bed, and with a woman smiling through exhausted eyes, in one man's arms is a well swaddled baby. I'm making a conscious effort not to listen in, but as but I as Anders approaches, I can see the men's faces light up. The one with free hands sweeps Anders into a big hug, while the other bounces the sleeping baby gently. A few words are exchanged and Anders graciously accepts the baby from another man. Or the other man. It's quite a sight. He smiles down at the small human as he cradles it gently. Aww. Silently, he places a small kiss on the child's forehead before passing it back to one of the fathers. The four of them stalled, talk for a while longer, leaving Brisket and I waiting by the nurse's desk. Eventually, Anders makes his way back towards me with a gentle smile. All done here. Are you hungry? I could eat. That's so cute. Wait, what? This place again? <laughs> I get to choose, remember? They're participating in the burger festival. I'm sure they'll impress. Mr. Hamilton, your usual table's ready. I gotta say. Um, you know, this game is very adorable. And very open. Thank you very much, shall we, Maganda? Anders takes my hand and guides me through the restaurant to the same table as last time. He pulls out my chair for me before taking his own. You're very polite, aren't you? You should know by now that's not necessarily true. Ooh, I just mean you pulled out my chair and you uh, always address your emails so formally. You're saying I'm old-fashioned? Not at all. Well, I mean, kind of. Don't worry. I know how to surprise at the right time. Oh, God! Everything he says is like a double with Andre. <laughs> Anders winks at me in place over the waiter. You're ready to order? Yes. No degustation today. We're here for the burger special. Well then, that won't be long at all. Can I recommend a wine to compliment? What do you say, Maganda? Cocktails. Wine me, dine me. 
I appreciate that you're willing to challenge your taste buds. Excellent choice. The waiter walks back towards the bar, leaving Anders and I sitting in relative silence. I look over at him and he realize he's staring at me, almost expectantly. A small smile plays upon his lips. What? You have a very nice aura. But what? Your presence. There's something about being around you that feels very intoxicating. Thanks. You, you're very... <laughs> uh, enigmatic. I, I want to say sexy, honestly, but enigmatic. I feel like there's a lot more to you that meets the eye. Oh, well, I wouldn't look too closely. I promise. I'm showing you my best side. Alright, enough embarrassing flirting. Tell me more about yourself. What would you like to know? Okay, this video is getting a little long. Huh. I'm gonna have to cut out some bits, probably, because I gotta try and keep it under 30 minutes now because of my computer. So, we're gonna stop halfway through a date. I'm so sorry. So, uh, see you in the next video.